Hi, so welcome back to Real Auto Reports for this real video, the real review on the 2014 BMW X5. All new for 2014 and well, a lot to talk about because it's got a big old V8 with twin turbo power, adaptive handling, and oh, a whole host of other options. So let's jump in the driver's seat, get going, and we'll tell you everything we can think of in the next 15 or so minutes. Hi, so welcome back. We are in the 2014 BMW X5. Now this is a pretty cool vehicle in that it is all new for 2014 and we're lucky enough to get to, uh, well, review it for quite a few days here and tell you what we think over well over 300 miles. So now that we've done that, what do we have to say? Well, there is a lot to talk about here because this vehicle is all new, as I said. It's got a nice new look. It's got a big throaty V8 with a twin power turbo setup and 445 horsepower. You also have all the luxury features you would expect out of a BMW here. But more than that, you have a vehicle that can be pretty flexible to your lifestyle, even though this one is really set up for that performance enthusiast. And uh, you can also tell that this vehicle has a very nice interior noise level. The interior noise level is a lot quieter than some of the mid-range SUVs, so I think you'll find as we're driving along today, you'll notice with the live mic on the GoPro that it's not as loud as some of the other vehicles we've tested. Now, what should we talk about first? Well, I always like to talk about the driving impression here with this ultimate driving machine from BMW. So what do we think? Well, this does have a new electric assist steering, so it is gonna have a nice smooth steering operation. You're not gonna notice that this vehicle is heavy or big. In fact, actually for 2014, we hear that it's lost a couple hundred pounds, so about 200 pounds, and it has a nice sleek and look. If you saw our real first impression, you'll have noticed that I talk a lot about how this vehicle doesn't really look like an SUV to me. It looks like a sports coupe on steroids and it has a great aggressive personality. And I think that is a, an important part of the BMW brand in this ultimate driving machine. With the electric steering and we also have the adaptive suspension in this vehicle, so that's an extra option group. This vehicle drives really nicely in the comfort mode setting. So you do have your settings like you would be used to. In this vehicle, the comfort mode setting gives you a nice smooth ride, very controlled, yet still allows you to be aggressive around the corners and not feel like it's getting out of control. I, I like it. You can feel the all-wheel drive in this. This does have the X-Drive all-wheel drive, and you can tell that it's there doing its magic along with the traction control, the anti-skid control, all of those safety features we've become accustomed to in these high luxury vehicles and even in the lower end ranges. Now down in the, the Hyundais and the Kias and even the lower end Toyotas and things like that have the same kind of safety system. So we've really become accustomed to it and we may not even really notice that they're on the option list anymore. So the other thing you'll notice is we're sitting at a light here and we have the stop start technology or the start stop technology. So there it goes, it starts right back up. And then you have the twin turbo power. So you can see there that we are well up to the 55 speed limit there. This vehicle has 445 horsepower out of the largest engine in the model lineup, the 4.4 liter V8 with the twin turbo. This will be zero to 60 in about 4.3 seconds according to a lot of the tests out there. Up here at a mile high, you're likely going to be a little bit slower than that because of the altitude, although with the turbo, Eh, maybe not. I mean, with the forced induction, you might not actually see too much degradation there. It's going to be a little thirsty on the fuel part of the equation. This vehicle is going to be 14 miles per gallon in the city, and it's going to be 22 miles per gallon out on the freeway with a 17 mile per gallon combined. It's not going to be a vehicle that you buy for the fuel economy, definitely. That's just a given. But 
if you're in traffic all the time, you're going to want to take into account that that 14 miles per gallon in the city because if you're stuck out on I-25 here in Denver or the 405 or I-95 on the East Coast all the time, that fuel you know rating may get to be a little bit you know of a problem for you. But uh, I don't know. You might not need to worry about it too much because. This is one of those premium vehicles that's gonna be right about $84,000 as we're testing it here. And you can actually push that up to a lot more than that in this vehicle. Like say 89, 88, 89, $90,000 if you wanna get all the options on it. This does have the M Sport package. So we have the M wheel here that you can see. And it also has the M seats with the adjustable bolsters you can adjust it six ways till Sunday, and you have the aero kits outside. Now see, we go through the curves here, and this vehicle is super flat, corners really well, and you're not gonna notice that it uh, is wallowing at all. Uh, in fact, I really like the way it drives with the fat rubber that you get with these optional 20 inch M wheels on this vehicle. Now that's another $950 option upgrade on this BMW X5. So all in all, when you get the M Sport package and you add that extra $950 option, at least on our Moroni sheet, you're, you're gonna be well over $4,000 for all the M look and feel packages, but it does give you the door sills and it gives you the wheel, as I said, it gives you the blacking outside the extra aero kits that we've mentioned and i like it a lot i think it is a nice look and feel and we see it on a lot of the cars that we test if you go back to the 650i the m6 of course also some of the 3 series like the 335i that we tested had the m sport package and so did the 4 series so all of those vehicles are going to have uh, this kind of package on it and I think it's worth the money because it is a beautiful look and it gives this car, or this SUV I should say, a real aggressive feel. Now there is a little bit of lag, see there you go, I was on the on the accelerator a lot earlier than that. There is a little bit of lag in these uh, twin power turbos from BMW and in the fact that you have uh, this transmission that has so many gears. So. I'm shifting it up here. I'm in six sitting here at the light. This is actually an eight speed automatic transmission. Now we're back into one automatically. So you can shift it manually with the paddle shifters or down here on the shift lever. Now we all know that uh, it's backwards for up and forwards for down in the BMWs, which will be different than some of the other auto manufacturers that you might've driven. I mentioned that just because um, I drive so many cars that I always have to think about it in, in the BMWs and say, ah, yes, okay, look at the shifter, down is forward. That's the negative sign. So the other things that I want to mention in this car is in this SUV is some of the other option packages that you can get that we don't have on this $84,000 version. So we don't have blind spot monitoring, you might have noticed. We also do not have... Uh, the adaptive cruise on this vehicle so those are a couple options that you can get but is not on this particular package set the other thing uh, that I think is worth mentioning is that we do not have the optional third row in this vehicle so we have the five seat version here you can for about $1,700 get a third row option and that may vary depending on your market but you can get that now what i've noticed about driving this vehicle for the last you know let's call it a week or so is that the back seat is very roomy it's nice it, it it's adjustable you can recline and move forward and backwards there's a lot you can do back there this does have the cold weather package which has your front and rear heated seats but with that third row and how short the opening is at the bottom of the door in this X5, it is uh, noted by, by many of us that have driven these that the entry and exit or the, uh, you know, the disembarking part of this story or the, the entrance into the vehicle when you're trying to climb into a third row is difficult. Um, it, it's actually difficult enough in just the five seat version. Your passengers that uh, if you have any passengers that have long legs, it's going to be a little harder. Short legs, it can also be hard because you're climbing basically up and over the wheel hump there. 
even though the vehicle has pretty long back doors, but it's the cutout that is the, the part that causes a little bit of a difficulty for some passengers. It's not a deal breaker by any means. This is an amazing looking and riding vehicle. It drives like you would expect a BMW to drive. Now I've heard some complaints that it is not as fun. It's not the ultimate driving machine, not like, oh, say an M6 or a 650i or a, a 335i three series you know that's one car drivers tend best for many 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 years in a row i think the thing is is that you always have to look at this vehicle based on what it is it is an suv an suv is always going to have to be a different driving experience and so for what it is with the fat rubber with on the 20 inch rims with the M Sport package, I think that makes it drive pretty darn sporty. It's tight through the corners. It, it does give you a little bit of understeer under massive load, but you'll find that that is minimal compared to uh, what you might have expected out of the older generations like the first gen X5. This is gonna drive a lot more dynamically. I've driven those quite a bit as well. This is gonna be quicker, it's gonna be faster turn in, more direct and, and I think refined steering, the adjustable damper suspension with the, the rear axle and everything in the option package we have makes this a pretty nice ride. Man, for $84,000, it darn well better be, right? So that's the big gotcha, right? Is the is the, the price tag and the fuel economy. Those are gonna be your two biggest issues because this comes with full maintenance for several years. So you don't have to worry about the maintenance package on this because BMW is going to take care of you. Many of the dealerships will even give you loaner cars while your vehicle's in the service. So you've got the customer service handled. It's whether or not you wanna spend the money on a vehicle like this. And I, I think that's really a personal preference. If you're looking at our review of the Range Rover Sport that we just looked at for 2014 with the uh, supercharged V6, if you're looking at the high-end Lexuses that we've looked at, the LXs or the even the G, GX, if you're looking at any of those vehicles that we've tested here at Real Auto Reports, then this is another vehicle you're going to want to cross shop. You're also going to want to cross shop this with the, the M line of the Mercedes because these are all vehicles that compete with each other and are pretty, you know, pretty well-known luxury brands that people love. And I, my feeling about BMW is you either love the BMW, you love the more sporty, slightly stiffer suspension, more driver-oriented and driver-centric controls. Everything's tilted at me, the driver. The passenger is along for the ride. If that's what you're looking for, then this vehicle is gonna be more to your liking than I would believe the Mercedes. Now, you also have the Audi brand. The Audi brand is going to be a more rough, uh, I think, subdued, more, uh, there's a word that I'm looking for there. It's going to be lower key. It's not going to be as flashy. So if you're looking at the Q5 or the Q7, that's going to be a good comparison to this. The Q7 is going to be feel bigger than this, but it's going to feel pretty much as sporty, especially in the S line. And so those are some vehicles you could look at to cross shop with this. I love these BMWs. I think they're great. Are they miss missing a few features for $84,000? I always, you know, kind of talk about this even with the Lexus brands and even the Audi brands to some degree. I would love a remote start on this. I, I, I think it should have it for, for the kind of car it is in the, in the cold weather package. I think it should have cooled seats in the front because why wouldn't you at $84,000? I, I really don't think you should have to pay extra for the blind spot monitoring and the, and the adaptive cruise. But those are all things that, you know, in a Highline brand, it's a different value assessment than when you're looking at a Kia or a Hyundai or a Mitsubishi or a Nissan. So you have to kind of take that into account. Very well-made cars, great fit and finish. The other thing that I will point out, I pointed this out in our real first impressions, and I'll take just a second here before we do the real wrap-up. It does have 
the window switches here on the door. Your lock switches are on the door too. That's different from older generation BMWs where everything was was uh, center stack or center console centric. Now, what I don't like about this is that I can open the rear lift gate from in the car. I can't seem to get it to close. The other thing is that rear lift gate has a split gate and I just, I don't know, I'm not a fan of the split gate. I have talked to consumers and other friends of mine who are. If you like the split gate, then ignore my comments, but I frankly think with especially the Cadillac Escalade coming out the 2015 with the power lift gate that you open with your foot like the Ford Escape, that, that drop down tailgate, because it's not automated and you have to pull another lever, just doesn't feel as technology savvy. It doesn't feel is forward looking. If it did it all automatically, I wouldn't have a problem with it. So that's just a little bit of my own personal preference on this. I like this car. I think anyone who owns one is going to love it. And uh, you're going to have the service taken care of and you're going to have this great, especially in this V8, you're going to have this great sound and noise. This vehicle will start at 68,200 at the base base model with the V8. You can also get a six-cylinder twin power turbo as well so you can you can get a more affordable version of this if you're willing to sacrifice some of the options and power so make sure you take a look at your local dealer this is uh real auto reports and we'll have the real wrap-up coming up next all right so that's the real video the real review on this 2014 BMW X5. This is the X-Drive 5.0i, as you'll see down the side. It That means it does have all-wheel drive. It is the big honking motor in the 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo power, 445 horsepower. And if I haven't mentioned it before, 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds as tested by other independent testers like Car and Driver. It is a great experience behind the wheel if you like acceleration because it will just set you back in your seat and rocket you off and with the all-wheel drive you have a lot of grip. You have adaptive suspension in this package that we have here so you'll keep those four tires glued to the road especially with these sports uh, rubber on it and these 20 inch M Sport wheels. That's a $950 upgrade that we've mentioned. And the M Sport package, of course, is several thousand dollars add on as well. And you get the aero kit. And it makes it look like a pretty sporty, dynamic SUV out on the market. You can get a seven seat option, as we've mentioned. This one does not have it. But we also don't have some of the other tech features that would push this vehicle up closer to $90,000, not the $83,975. 84,000, if you will, that we have on the MSRP right here as tested in this vehicle. Now, this vehicle will start out at a base of 68,200, but I defy you to find one on the lot that is that stripped. You are likely going to find them with a nice set of luxury features and conveniences because that's what we expect out of our BMWs. I think the M Sport package is well worth the looks and the upgrades looks much better than the smaller wheels on this vehicle. And uh, well, there's a couple things that you do have to pay the price for from a performance perspective, which is you get that zero to 60 time, but you also get the 14 miles per gallon in city and 22 on the highway, which is going to hit your pocketbook every time you pull into the gas station. But you might not care if you're looking at a vehicle like this, unless you're stuck on the 405 or I-25 every day of the week in traffic. So things to consider, and we hope you enjoyed the review. We'll have more coming for you right here from Real Auto Reports. I'm Jonathan McGrew right here at Real Auto Ranch, and we'll see you down the road. <music>